I was able to become a millionaire by the time I turned 30 and I was not born in a trust fund. I started with zero and the investment strategies that I did in my early 20s to get me there, I'm about to teach you now. I'm so glad that because of TikTok, the word stonks, stocks, crypto and Bitcoin and NFTs and the metaverse are all these places that are people talking about investing. However, I got to bring it back to the fundamentals because although people have gotten rich from Dogecoin and they bought these meme coins, it scares me that when people think of the word, oh, I'm investing and they think of putting all their money into these meme coins, you have to call me old school, but that seems ultra risky. I want to talk about how you, you should invest in that, but I want to talk about a portfolio. What the definition of that is because in my early 20s, there was Bitcoin, but I, I, didn't, uh, I had no idea about it. But even then, there was always these get-rich-quick schemes that you could just go to the moon. You, you invest all your money and the, the chances of doubling and 100x your income, there, that's always there. Uh, 10 years ago, it wasn't, it wasn't Bitcoin, it wasn't the metaverse. Um, and 10 years from now, it's going to be something else. There's always, you know, dangling that carrot of here's all this money you can make if you just, the bigger the risk, the bigger the payout, right? However, if you are thinking about long term, you know, like, it's weird to say this, but like, imagine this gray hair on my chin all over my body, and I'm an old man. I want to make sure that I can retire and I don't have to work for the rest of my life. And Bitcoin, hopefully, will be around and it will be a big part of my portfolio then. But for now, while it's super volatile, I want to explain to you, starting with the first thing you should keep in mind when it comes to the word investments, which is having a diversified portfolio. So here's five different investment pieces of advice that I took in my early 20s that now you're about to learn. The first is pretty much, I want you to dive into this world called fire movement. What does that mean? financial independence, retire early. It's this movement that basically says, if you've ever heard that you should save 10 to 15% for your retirement, you've been lied to because who wants to retire when they're old and gray and 65 and 70, hopefully? It's really far out there. I wanna retire now. Um, actually, I can because of learning about this movement, but it comes with the great price or cost or sacrifice. The summary of this movement is that you need to not just say 15%, 30%, but higher than that. That's really hard to do, especially if you live paycheck to paycheck, especially if you're grinding it out, you don't have high income. How is it possible? Well, this is where frugal sacrifices come in. I lived in a van last year. It was not by choice, but the effect of living in a van and basically getting rid of a home, my cost uh, per living in that van was roughly a thousand dollars a month C combined with like my super high income I ended up saving like 98% of every dollar that I made but it's one example of like being really frugal let me give you something more practical like meal prepping don't go out to eat and do not order cocktails because uh, that's really where people blow a lot of money that alone you take that you save it and that habit of basically making these sacrifices for a period of a decade, you can really start moving that, maybe if you are saving 10%, moving that up to 30% and more. Um, I know one thing that's a big problem that we all have, typically, is you get promoted. Congratulations. You get a raise. Congratulations. Guess what you do? We celebrate. Let's go out, first of all. We gotta have a nice dinner. Maybe get some Dom Perry on. And you, you know, have one night, you spend a couple hundred dollars higher than your normal restaurant. But then it doesn't stop there. Then it's like, I just got promoted. I'm a marketing manager now. So I can't be driving around this Prius. I got to get something nicer. So you bump it up to Corolla, to a Lexus. And what happens is you just increased your cost of living. So did you actually start making more money? No, you just increased your cost of living to the new raise of promotion you got. So the fire movement would be like, that is not what you're supposed to do. You should actually double down and start living less uh, of decreasing your cost of living with your increased wages. Now you can invest more for your future. It's about thinking about the future and really being frugal. And I'm going to give you amazing documentary. There's a fire documentary and this is not the fire festival documentary. Please don't get confused because that's whole badness of, of stuff to watch. But there's an actual fire documentary and people uh, who start from scratch and say, hey, I have, I'm a regular human. I haven't taken the blue pill from the matrix. I don't know about this fire room, but I want to tap into it. And, and it walks you through. It's on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below. 
So you're now part of the fire movement. You are more conscious about where you spend in your saving. But the reality is no matter how much money you make, you cannot save your way to retirement. You have to learn about this thing called investing. What are investments? What are good investments, bad investments? Well, I can tell you there's a whole array of people who are always willing to give you their ideas on what you should do. Um, I was at uh, the barber shop uh, the other day, you know, working on this fade and uh, the conversation was about the metaverse. And this guy was like, hey, I'm, I've heard about NFTs and the metaverse. I want to buy some virtual real estate because I hear it come up. And maybe he's right. Maybe I'm just, you know, an old fart now and I, and I totally don't understand why I should be investing it. And maybe it will work out for him great. But the way he talked about it, that was his all in game plan. Bruh. He was, he wasn't he didn't talk about like his 401k and and he all these other traditional boring investments. He, Metaverse is where he thought he was going to get rich. And the real investment strategy it doesn't work like that. You're thinking long term, and the most tried and true way that has built more wealth for any basically group of people of all different backgrounds and races is the stock market. But I want to stop you right there because the stock market does not mean you have to go and start picking stocks and day trading and buying Facebook and buying GameStop because true investing, especially with the fire movement is about being diversified. So uh, this is kind of a combination of point two and three, what you invest in to make sure it's diversified in what's called a portfolio. Portfolio is supposed to be balanced towards your goals. What's your goal? Not have to work. That's the first goal we pretty much all have. And then, you know, I'm sure you're like, well, that's one goal, but I also want to live in a freaking awesome mansion and have a private jet. We can get into that. But for the sake of this video, I just want you guys to think about how awesome life would be like if you did not have to go to work. You basically had your money making enough money to give you your own salary that you don't need to go out somewhere else and get a salary. So investing into a diversified portfolio and, um, Typically, I'm going to just break it down. I, this is not something I invented because I'm not a financial advisor. Little disclaimer. There is a super awesome book out there that I read called Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins. And he talks uh, with so many of the world's greatest like money masters in our history um, that are alive. And one of them is Ray Dalio. And he talks about this portfolio that's called All Weather Portfolio. Basically, by putting your money in here, um, no matter what happens in the market and depending on what time you're watching this video in the last, basically since COVID happened, the markets have been crazy. And so people are like, oh my God, the stock market's up and oh my God, it's crashing. And basically it's all weather portfolio supposed to protect you in all times. Now I will let you know if you do not have ever invested into the stock market before, it's not guaranteed. No one can guarantee you anything. But if you look at the history of the stock market, literally the history since the inception, People have accumulated wealth over a time span of basically 30 years. Yes, 30 years. This is not a get rich quick scheme, but this is for sure the most guaranteed way that you can retire is by investing into the stock market. So now you know that you need to invest, but what do you invest in? You know about the importance of having a portfolio, but what does that even mean? So legally, I'm actually not allowed to tell you, you should invest in this, uh, even if it's the same stuff I invest in. But so I'm going to give you a point you in the right directions of a couple different places. First, you really want to learn about what an ETF is and an index fund and how that differs from a mutual fund. These are pretty much the most common things when your parents or you have a 401k that gets auto invested into these things. But, uh, I enjoy prefer, ETFs and index funds because of the cost of these. So when you invest in something, it's not free. It costs you money. It doesn't cost you like a transaction and it, you'll never know it costs. So that's the kind of sneaky thing with some financials is that it kind of just takes away from the money that's invested over time, usually a percentage. So, um, I know one thing I learned a lot uh, from money master of the game was that there's mutual funds, which are ba basically people, smart people that, are supposed to basically outperform the market. Uh, the stock market, have, if you ever hear like how the stock market didn't last year, a mutual fund's job is basically to beat it. An ETF or index fund is basically not a human. It's an algorithm. It's a robot trying to match the market. So it matches the market. So when you hear the market's up 10%, 
an index fund that is matching the market like the S&P 500, it's going to be up 10% as well. A mutual fund, it's not guaranteed. They're going to try to be up 10%. Sometimes they are. Most of the times they're not. And they cost more. Typically, it's just about overhead, right? When you have people doing the job, it's going to cost more than if you have an algorithm or a robot. Um, so, um, I again, I'm tell, I prefer ETFs and index funds, and I do want to point you in one direction. So, um, Acorns is probably one of my favorite apps, and it is basically what's called a robo advisor app. So, typically. Uh, you, if you were to go to a financial advisor, you'd meet with a human and they would recommend human based products. And, uh, Acorns is basically eliminating the financial advisor. It basically is having all these interactions that you would have about like questioning about what your goals are, what your risk tolerance, and it creates a portfolio of ETFs and index funds. Um, so I'm actually going to hop on, uh, in this next part and show you my Acorns account. I created it uh, just about a year ago and I just dollar cost average into it and it's pretty crazy what's happened. So this is my Acorns account. I just started literally about a year ago. So I'll drag to try to get here to January 1st and it basically had just about $500 in it. And every single day in 2021, I basically put $200 plus rounding up my spare change. This is what kind of made Acorns famous is that like every time you use your credit card or debit card, it will take the spare change and it will invest it. And so on top of my $200 a day um, uh, investment plus the change that was being invested, it's now $77,000. But I want to let you know, most of this is my contribution because it's my first year. But this bunny made money and that's the whole point of investing. It made in the last 12 months $4,569. So this is a big thing I want to stress for this point, um, why you should invest. A lot of people are saving their money and they're keeping it in their bank account, right? Your bank account is never going to pay you this amount. It doesn't matter. You have to have millions of dollars because bank accounts are usually paying you like a fraction of a percent for keeping your money in it. Inflation, if you've never heard of it, is basically this process that we can't control. And everything that we buy starts increasing in price. So from a gallon of milk to gas to buying a home inflation, prices increase. And so uh, right now we're at a record pace of inflation. This is not good. This is very bad. It's 6%. It doubled basically in the last couple years since COVID. The government has just been printing money, printing money. And typically what happens when there's more money printed by the government is inflation increases. Anyways, I'm really sorry to bore you. I just want to make the point that if your money is invested to like Acorns, for example, into a portfolio of ETFs and index funds matched to meet your goals, your money can actually have the opportunity to make money versus technically when you keep it in the bank, it loses money because inflation is on the rise. Just to show you my portfolio here and let me just first say my portfolio does not mean you should copy what I'm doing. It's totally based off me. A portfolio is about your individual needs and your goals. For me, this is not my main way of investing. I'm kind of doing this really as an experiment. And so uh, my portfolio, it's literally right here. It says aggressive. So although I did make $4,500 from my investments in 2020 on Acorns, it could have gone down if the market went down because it's aggressive. So it's going to be more volatile. And if the idea that having the money that you worked really hard for invested losing and you're checking the stock market every day like scares you, then maybe you should have a more conservative portfolio. But I'll let you know right now, I won't always be aggressive. Um, as you get older, you tend to actually have more conser conservative approach in your investments because you're about to retire. You're about to stop making an income from your job. So you want to make sure your money is there and it doesn't disappear. And that is seriously what I'm so worried about people today is that they're just going all in, cashing out their 401k, investing into BIP, coin and, and Ethereum and the whole point, maybe those things are going to be amazing, but I just think you should have a balanced portfolio, put Bitcoin and Ethereum and the metaverse in your portfolio, make sure it's no more than 10% of your entire net worth. Um, and I think that way, if it goes away, it, you're going to be okay. And if it ends up skyrocketing, that's going to be great. And of course you'll regret not spending more money into it, but you won't put all your eggs in one basket. So those are five different strategies that I personally use to help grow my net worth to seven figures by the time I turn 30. 
And if you are someone that starts doing all these things like learning about ETFs and index funds, investing and being frugal, joining the FIRE movement, reading the book Money Master the Game, and you're like, you know what, I just I need more money. Um, I can help you with that. I just actually have an awesome video on the top three side hustles that you should try in 2022, so you have to check that out. Well, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching. Comment any questions you have on your financial goals. I'm happy to help. Otherwise, peace and God bless.